I'm going to make a quick announcement. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I just wanted to make a quick announcement, which is hymn number 330, Oh, Praise Ye the Lord.
peace be brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make us perfect in every good work to do your will, and work in us that which is well-pleasing in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which is Greek for Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydia was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with the request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with him. Peter put all of them aside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner, the word of the Lord.
At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe, because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So when I was a young lad, I used to be a little eccentric. I enjoyed dressing up in costumes and pretending to be different characters. Now, well, thank goodness I grew out of that. <laughs> okay, aside from dressing up as Elvis, maybe on occasion, I grew out of that. So as a little boy, though, I would put on a cape or before school, and I would pretend to be Superman, or I would wear a deer hunter's hat and pretend to be Sherlock Holmes. I had a very active imagination, and for the most part, the other kids just went along with it. Now, there was one day, however, when I remember an older boy who pointed out to me, and in his words, he said, you're being stupid. Well, the only reason I mention that today is because that incident, the boy calling me stupid, had to be over 40 years ago. So why do I remember it so well today? I remember it because it hurt. I remember it because his words felt like a tiny little cut. And for whatever reason, that left a small mark on my soul. The thing of it is, every single encounter with every single human being that we have throughout our lives effectively matters and means something. We can leave people feeling better about who they are, or we can leave them feeling worse. Now, I have talked to people at Camp Wendake, and if you don't know Camp Wendake, I'm the chaplain there for one week at the end of August every summer. And it's a camp for people who are infected or affected by HIV and AIDS. So at this camp, I've talked to people, and some of them, are of different sexual orientations. And they will tell me stories of things that have happened to them and the hate that they have heard. And I can't even repeat some of the words that, that they had to endure or have to endure in their lives from this pulpit. That kind of hate stays with a person. That kind of hate runs very, very deep. Too often, I will hear off-handed remarks about our indigenous people or our Muslim neighbors, even our Christian siblings. And those comments most assuredly will make their way to the ears of the very people that it will sting and divide and separate. So when the Pharisees ask Jesus, if you are the Messiah, tell us plainly, Jesus answered, well, I've told you, and you do not believe. So that would be confusing for the Pharisees because they wanted a plain answer. Jesus, though, never gives them a plain answer. Rather, he shows the Pharisees throughout the Gospel of John by the way he treats every human being. That's how Jesus shows who he is and what it truly means to be the Messiah, and to be fully human. Our job is to take what Jesus demonstrates for us and live it out to make the world a better place for others here on earth. 
Our job is to make space for those who are different from us while we are here. Our job is to give a little piece of heaven to those where life has become a living hell. Because every single encounter matters. Today, as we thank our mothers or those in our lives who have accepted, cared for, and nurtured us as mothers, I can't help but think of the appropriateness of our gospel reading and the impact these parental figures have had on our lives. Today, I think of the parents of this world who managed to bring a little piece of heaven to earth by preparing a space for and loving their children or grandchildren or great-grandchildren. Like so many other parents in this room, I remember my mother growing up and how she always made room for others. Friends and relatives were always welcomed with open arms, no matter their politics, race, religion, or economic status. That was just the way it was. And that is the way it needs to be. That is the gospel. That is the good news. In her book, Mary's Way, Peggy Millen writes, I was on a train on a rainy day. The train was slowing down to pull into the station. For some reason, I became intent on watching the raindrops on the window. Two separate drops pushed by the wind merged into one for a moment and then divided again each carrying with it a part of the other. Simply by that momentary touching, neither was what it had been before. And as each one went on to touch the other, the other raindrops shared not only one, but changed into something of its own. I saw this metaphor many years ago, and it is one of the most vivid memories. I realized then that we never touch people so lightly that we do not leave a trace. We never touch people so lightly that we do not leave a trace. Do we make room for others? Do we make space in our hearts for all of God's children, for all of God's creation? What trace do we want to leave on another soul? In the deep dark days of apartheid in South Africa, a nine-year-old black boy was walking down the sidewalk with his mother. When they noticed walking in their direction, a white man. Now in the days of apartheid, when a black person and a white person met while walking on the sidewalk, the black person was expected to step into the gutter to allow the white person to pass and nod their head as a gesture of respect. Now on this day, the young boy and his mother could step off the sidewalk. Before they could step off the sidewalk, the white man stepped off the sidewalk. And as the mother and the boy passed, he tipped his hat in a gesture of respect to her. The young boy, confused, asked his mother why the white man stepped aside, and his mother told him he stepped off the sidewalk because he was a man of God. He was an Anglican priest. In that moment, the nine-year-old boy found his call. A young Desmond Tutu looked at his mother and said, I want to be a man of God too. Remember, today and always, that we never touch people so lightly that we do not leave a trace. Amen. And now, let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit 
and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under conscious Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please take a position of prayers for the prayers of the people. As we stand in God's presence, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear and have mercy. Merciful God, we come to you with praise and thanksgiving in our hearts. Thank you for being the creator of life and the source of hope. Lord, Lord hear and We pray for the Church of the Living God throughout the world and ask for your grace when we struggle to fully embrace the way of Christ. In faith, we pray that you will teach us to hear your voice ever more clearly and to follow you wholeheartedly towards life and all that is good. Lord, hear we pray for a list of our for the leaders of the nations and all in authority. May they attend to the most vulnerable and use their power for the good of all. We thank you, Lord, for all who give their energy or skill for the healing of those who are sick in body or in mind. Please continue to guide our nation and those overseeing the provision of health care in each province to ensure that racism, misogyny, and other forms of systemic bias do not act as barriers for people needing to access the health care system. Lord, it is heartbreaking to see what the people of the Ukraine are forced to endure day after day. We know too that there are others like them who are suffering in other regions of the world. We pray for peace. Empower us to work with other nations to be stronger agents of this peace. We continue to pray for our worshiping community and to lift up Amanda to you, praying that she will be successful in completing her education. We pray as well for our mothers, our family, and friends at this time, that you will bless them with good health and a joyful spirit. Lord, hear and have mercy. We pray for the Reverend Canon Dr. Doug Lee, his wife Phyllis, and all their family and friends. May Doug rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, Lord hear and have mercy. We pray for Carly that she will recover well from her surgery and that she will feel strengthened by her faith and by the love of those around her. We pray for all who are ill and are in need of healing. <coughs> Lord, hear and have mercy. Lord, please grant a peaceful end 
and <coughs> eternal rest to all who are dying and to comfort those who are grieving at this time. Lord, hear and have a look. We pray, God, gracious Lord, together with the author of today's song, that your goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and that we will all dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have not done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My siblings in Christ, may the peace of our Lord be always with you. Peace, peace be with you. Peace. Our hymn is hymn 361. He took flesh of the Virgin Mary 
and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name.
steadfast love, watch over the church redeemed by the blood of your Son. May we who share in these holy mysteries come safely to your eternal kingdom, where there is one flock and one shepherd. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask for. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Well, before we say our blessed Lord, which, oh, one other thing, and this is not as an important announcement, but it is an announcement nonetheless. Don't forget to watch the Leafs game tonight. <laughs> 7 o'clock p.m. Okay. The peace of our Lord which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Amen.